Hey, what's up everybody? I know it's been a while. I'm sorry for that. I uh, sort of had shoulder surgery and you know, so I'm in a sling, been doing things one-handed. It's definitely been slowing me down a bit and that's made it difficult to get videos out. But I finally got some time. I wanted to make a quick one today just to let you know I'm still alive and planning to make more videos in the future. And today I just wanted to follow up my recent video about accessing bits. If you missed that video, that video talks about how to access a single bit in a variable. Like let's say we want bit three. We just want to know if it's a one or a zero. I talked about how you actually can determine if it's a one or a zero. Some of you asked, well, that's great. How do I set that bit to a one? or a zero, or how do I toggle it? So today, just a quick video to try to build on that previous video and add setting bits, clearing bits, and toggling bits to your repertoire. This video will contain source code, and as always, source code is available on Patreon. Thank you for supporting this channel. Now let's jump into the code. Okay, so this is more or less where we left off in the previous video. I did add one more check for system, and I updated this so that it actually reflects what happens in FAT12, which was the example I was using in the previous video. So today I just like to expand this example just a bit and try to add setting and clearing and toggling bits. So what I'm going to do first is let's just take this whole thing and I want to just sort of take what we did here, which just to refresh, we basically took a number X, which I set to 50 to 42 and we printed out the number. We printed out the number in binary like this. And then we checked to see if certain bits were set, like the read only bit, the hidden bit, the system bit. And those were defined as bit masks here. You can see the hex here and you can see the binary here. I also made this max macro up here that would get a single bit value. You just specify the variable you're looking for X and the N being the number of the bit number that you want. So if this is zero, you get bit zero. If it's four, you get bit four. And so this will test for a single bit. So before we get too into it, I want to refactor this just a little bit and make, I want to make a function that does all this stuff. So let's say, let's just make something that prints a bit. Sorry, I'm a little slow typing one handed bit info. And then let's pass in a un32 underscore t and we're going to call it x because that's what I called it down below and print bit info. Okay, so then what I want to do here is basically just take all the stuff that was in here and we're just going to take it out of here and put it up into this function. So basically the idea is I want to generalize this a little bit so that I can pass in a variable and we'll print out the information about that variable. Okay, so pretty straightforward, but this allows us then to come down here and we have this 42. So we can say print bit info 42 and that should give us the same result we had before. Let's just test it out. We will compile and it's giving us a warning that we're not actually using this variable. That's okay. That's because I put 42 in here instead of X that we should now. Uh, yeah. Okay. So now our warning is gone. Okay, great. And then just one bit and you can see we get the same result as before. Okay. Now the reason I wanted to do this is so that we could print out the information and then we can do, we can print it out again. And now we can play around with the bit values if we want to set a bit. Okay. So now you remember from the last one that we had these different bit masks. This was how we were working with it. And this is what we'll do again, right? So if I have a bit mask that has a one in the position where I want, well, the bit position that I want to change. So let's say that I, you know, zero, one, two. So this one has a one in position two. This bit mask is going to allow me to do things to bit two. Okay. So specifically, what I want to do. Let's say that we want to turn on bit two. So let's say we want to set a bit two. That is the system bit. Yes. So we want to turn on bit two. And simply what I can do here is, and by the way, turning on a bit, setting it to one, we refer to that as setting the bit. If we're setting, if we're making it a zero, then we're going to call that clearing the bit. Okay. So if you hear anyone just say, oh, you got to clear that bit. That means you're setting that bit to zero. So what we can do here is we can take X and we'll just say, I'm going to write this out longhand really quick. Just say X equals X bitwise ORD with this system bit mask. So what this is going to do is it's going to give you the bitwise or of every bit in here. But keep in mind that all of them are zero except the one that you want to set. And one or with anything else is just a one, right? So this guarantees that now we have a one in that position too. Okay, let's just verify that this actually worked, that I didn't screw anything up. And sure enough, now if you look down here, now our result is we have 46, which is just the same as 42, except it has a one in position 
2. And you can see down here, sure enough, we are printing out the system notification, right? Okay, so we have successfully set a bit. Now, what happens if you want to clear a bit, right? Clearing a bit, this sometimes confuses people a little. It's not that bad. Really, all we're going to do is, let's say that we wanted, let's let's clear one of the others, like let's clear this bit one, okay? So if we come up here, position one, that is the hidden bit. Okay, so let's come down here and say, now if we, if we wanted to set it, which I mean, it's already set, but so like if we or it with hidden, just like before, this would try to set it to be a one, right? This sets that bit to be a one. So we don't wanna do that. What instead we wanna do is we want to get the opposite bit mask from hidden, right? Basically where it's all ones, except for a zero in the position that we want to be a zero, right? So what we'll do here is we'll basically just compute the bitwise complement. And then instead of oring, we're going to and. Okay, so what this is gonna do is it's going to and one with all of your bits except the one that you want to clear. And keep in mind, one anded with anything else just gives you what that other thing was. So a one, when we're anding, a one in the bit position doesn't change the bit, but a zero guarantees that it goes to a zero. Okay, so this is going to set position one to zero. Okay, let's just demonstrate that really quick. And sure enough, you can see hidden has now disappeared. Okay, so this is how we set right here. And then down here is how we clear a bit. Okay. Okay. Now the last one I want to look at is how do we toggle a bit? Okay. Now toggling, you'll hear people talk about if you're new to this, toggling just means that if it's a one, we make it a zero. If it's a zero, we make it a one, right? We're just going to make it whatever it wasn't. Now, yes, we could do this with an if statement and say, if it's a zero, set it to be one. If it's a one, set it to be a zero, but there is a more elegant way to do this. And that is with the XOR operator. So if I take a one and XOR it with a bit, I am going to get the opposite of what that bit was. Because exclusive or will be a one only if one of these bits, but not both of them is a one, right? So if I take a one and I XOR it with one, that's going to give me a zero. And if I XOR it with zero, that's going to give me a one, right? So it just basically gives me the opposite of what I already have. So what we'll do is for that, we'll come down here and let's just toggle. Okay, so we're going to use the exclusive or operator and let's use, let's pick a different position. Let's pick read only. And this of course could be any of them. And this is going to toggle. So notice that we are, we no longer have to take the complement. We're now we just straight up, we take this. So you XOR with zero doesn't change XOR with one and it is going to change. But so this should, I typed everything incorrectly. We should now have a read only system output here and you notice that we toggled this value. Now, let's say just so you can see that I'm actually doing something that's actually gonna work. If you had toggle again and we run make and we recompile, now you can see that we've actually turned that bit off again. So these two toggle operations basically cancel each other out. And so that basically, yeah, turns the bit back off, but let's put it back on. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense. Now, one other thing which you're gonna see a lot in case you haven't seen a shorthand for this is rather than doing this X equals X or system, you can go, and this is what people will usually do is say, or equals. So the or equals operator, it's exactly the same as what I've been showing you, but it's just a little bit shorter, but you can see it basically is doing the same thing. So you can do that over here, right? We can and equals and we can XOR equals. Okay. So that just makes my code a little more compact, but we get the exact same result. So I just wanted to show you that just so it doesn't throw you. If you see this in future examples or systems that you work on, this is simply just shorthand for what we had before, which is X equals something or anded or XORed with something else. And the nice thing about this notation is not only is it shorter, but also because there's less to type, it's less likely for you to make a mistake and accidentally type something other than X on the other side, which we are particularly prone to if we are copying and pasting code. It's easy to not update everything. And so you can end up oring, anding or XORing to the wrong thing. And that's gonna be a problem because it's gonna give you the wrong result. So I hope that's useful to you. I hope it helps in a future project project. Hope you learned something new today. If you did, like, subscribe, click something on your way out. There are more videos coming in the future. I can't guarantee timeline because, well, I'm still doing this one-handed and I'm a little slow, but they're coming. I haven't forgotten about you. But until next time, happy coding and I'll see you later.